two plans that are different, two different plans of salvation. Which one's correct? They're polarized. They're diametrically opposed to each other. I mean, they're at the opposite ends of the spectrum. It's like two different ways a magnet. A magnet can push against another magnet or be attracted to it. Which one of these programs, okay, or plans, or descriptions, however you want to word it, which one is correct? Which one is really salvation and the other a deception? Can you tell? Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the Bible. Um, the first plan, I'm going to call it plan A, and the second plan I'll call plan B. Plan A is in 90-some percent of the churches. Plan B is a very tiny amount of people, believe it. Let's talk about what the Bible says first. I'm going to look at the book of John, 1 John, and particularly chapter 3, verse 7. This is a warning. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, that he is Jesus. But look at the word doeth. Well, don't let nobody deceive you. Righteous people do righteousness. Okay? Really important. Verse 8, he that committeth sin, King James Version, meaning you're doing an act of sin, is of the devil. Okay? For the devil sinned from the beginning, and for this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, if the works of the devil is in a particular person's life, Jesus might destroy that. It's conditional. And it's also conditional when you look at the word committeth. <laughs> okay? Commits. He that commits sin. That's an action. Isn't that interesting? And then it says in verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. Well, what's commit again? That's like an action. That's like, we're going to go down and rob the bank. That's committing an act of sin. Or, if you stub your toe and you start cussing at God. That's an action, committing sin. Very important. But, whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. That means there's something that has changed in the heart of a person who is born again. It's so strong. It's, it's actually the power of God that gives them the ability to not sin. Okay? So they cannot sin. Uh, Satan cannot. Remember, he that commits sin is of the devil. The devil's involved here. He can't get to a person that's born again because their seed remains in them. Now, verse number 10, very important. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Okay, here's our two different plans. Okay, plan A and plan B. Which is which? Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Well, you know what loving your brother means? Think about it. You got a brother, somebody, some person who's a drug addict, or they have uncontrollable thoughts and anger, and uh, they, they can't stop drinking, or uh, a woman that's caught up in, 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 in sexual, you know, doing things bad for money. All of these terrible things that can grab people and take over. If you love them, you will help them get out of the mess of committing sin, you know. And you don't keep cussing at God and calling him dirty, profane names. A lot of people do this. I seen a Baptist preacher uh, about a month ago. I was standing behind him. He didn't know I was there. And he was cussing and calling God terrible, dirty names. And then he would turn around and tell you that he's saved. He was part of plan A, okay. But go back up here to verse 7. Little children, let no man. Let's, let's talk any man. Don't let no man deceive you. Okay, that means... There's going to be a lot of men that would like to deceive you. A lot. When he says, let no man, that's implying there are a lot, a lot of men that want to deceive you. And so what's the answer to keep from being deceived? He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he. Now that's Jesus is righteous. It doesn't say that Jesus takes his righteousness and looks at it, and you are a doer of, not, not a doer of righteousness, but he only looks at his own and lets you off the hook. It doesn't say that. It says, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. So what are the two different plans? Plan A and plan B. Plan A of salvation is, Jesus' atonement on the cross will forgive you of sin. What he did, death, burial, and resurrection. Don't have no problem with it. But their opinion is that you do not do righteousness. That you are imputed Jesus' righteousness as you continue living a life as a Christian. Meaning that you continue sinning. You never look at yourself to do righteousness. It's only his imputed righteousness. Now, plan A of salvation will say something like, Jesus' blood covers you, so God cannot see your sin. That's not in the New Testament. It's not at all. The New Testament says, you're washed, cleansed, and forgiven by the blood of the, blood of the Lamb. Jesus' blood cleanses you from all sin. doesn't say it covers up the mess, and you keep doing it. So plan A. Okay, so why would they come up with this plan? Well, number one, Satan would like to keep people deceived with the spirit of Antichrist, deceiving everybody into believing they can live sinful, and God justifies it by what Jesus did on the cross and allow them to continue living sinful. 
Well, then they try to come back with progressive sanctification, meaning over a long period of time, you will do less and less sin. And if you would look at the Bible, and it says, well, I write to you that you sin not, Paul said, but if you sin, you have an advocate in Jesus Christ, and they go, aha, our story is true. They take that in different verses and try to apply it to their idea or their model of salvation, the problem with it is, it, having an advocate that will help you repent doesn't mean that you continue under the control of Satan committing acts of sin. And so now I'm talking out of the side B plan that Jesus really cleanses you from all sin. It says it in the Bible, plain as a nose on your face. Plan A says, well, he does, but that's only his imputed, uh, God looking at Jesus' righteousness, you always continue sinning. It never says that. Oh, well, you stay in the flesh. That's plan A. Plan B says, no, Paul said, you're no longer in the flesh. So you have two different stories. Theirs is helping someone that's broken down, sinful, living a bad life, who gives their heart to Jesus, cries out, well, now they're saved, but they always wallow in sin, wishing that they didn't do it. See, that will tell you that. And then they slowly, maybe over 10 years, okay, or a lifetime, or never achieve it. They'll die sinful. But because Jesus died on the cross, his righteousness is imputed to God. Therefore, they're saved, even though they continue sinning. And it says right here, let little children, let no man deceive you. That's the deception. You continue being and doing acts of unrighteousness. But it says right here, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. Okay, and you jump right down to number 10, verse 10. In this are manifest the children of God and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Well, you see, but then they would say, oh, that's Jesus' righteousness. No, and it says in verse 7, even as he is righteous. You see, you do righteousness like Jesus as he even does righteousness. So it's your doing the acts that makes you a children of God or a children of the devil. So plan A is wrong. You do not continue sinning, doing acts of unrighteousness. Because if you do, that's the proof you're a child of the devil. You rather repent, are cleansed from all sin, like it says in the book of John. It washes us and cleanses us from all sin. That Jesus' blood on the cross. And then he gives you the power, the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's how you can walk holy. You can do acts of righteousness. You're a doer of righteousness. But you know, this whole plan B is very few people. Because... It really is a thing of the heart. Very few people want this. It says in the Bible that the path to righteousness is narrow and few find it. So the plan B is only a few. Jesus said it'll be like the days of Noah. That's not very many people. Um, Jesus said, when I return to earth, <laughs> come back down here, will I find faith? Well, the first the first model, plan A, is not faith. If, if they leave someone hurt and sinning and a mess and, and, and they don't get out of it. Matter of fact, for, for preachers to teach plan A, it's not love. You're not loving a person. If you don't tell them Jesus can set them free, and who the Son sets free is free indeed. But that's plan B. So there are two plans. Which one of them are you involved with? Are you a child of God, plan B, or are you a child of the devil who commits sin? It says right there in verse 8, he that commits sin is of the devil. You know how many preachers I've told have told me to their told me to my face. Oh, I commit sin all the time. I'm of the devil. And I said, What did you say? Oh, but Jesus' righteousness is what saves me. Okay, Jesus saves you but you are of the devil, and you don't change. Oh, no, I'll never change. If I did, then I wouldn't need Jesus. You hear this crazy, deceptive talk? No, Christians are not of the devil. Christians are Christ-like. They're called Christians. And this is, this is trying to explain the difference between plan A, that leaves you stuck in sin, plan B, which is love, which Jesus washes and cleanses you from all sin and gives you the power to resist sin. If you get into trouble with plan B, you have an advocate. But plan A wants to use this advocate for giving you as an excuse to keep sinning. God bless you.